Welcome to Jack of All Trades 505. This is your host, Joseph. This is your first time here. Welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Uh, this is the first video that I have done in a little while. Uh, as some of you may know, I am attending college. And so uh, it is kind of hard to find time for my own kind of little projects and uh, to do things on my own. So this was a skateboard deck that I found uh, at the mall. Uh, it was white and I decided, hey, I would try to uh, customize it myself. Uh, I used to ride many, many years ago, uh, back when Santa Cruz, Duckbill boards, the banana boards, like back in the beginning. So I've been riding for, you know, I rode for a lot of years, uh, street, Bert and uh, yeah so this was a fun little project um, just a little side note uh, this uh, as of making this video we have uh, finally passed uh, 100 subscribers on the channel so I'd like to thank you thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel uh, thank you for helping it to grow uh, thank you guys for your support I will continue to try to make these videos uh, as often as I can and continue to try to, uh, you know, give you what little bit of insight that I can into my process. Uh, here I decided to go with the paper mask technique. Uh, so just cutting out rather than drawing out the features beforehand, I decided to just cut out the features uh, as I go and um, build upon uh, each of the areas that I've already painted until I have a completed piece. So I cut out the eyes. Uh, I usually start out with the top lash section uh, just because it's usually black and uh, we'll cut in the, I guess, the eye, the iris itself along with that shape. And then uh, I will shape out the eye from that cutout, and then once that has been established, then I'll cut out the rest of the eye to uh, slightly uh, dust in towards the edges to give it that roundness while using the paper to obviously block for any overspray. Uh, I do cut out the eyebrows as well, again, trying to shape them in individual hairs within that shape without just spraying in heavily into that area. Uh, same thing with the nose, uh, cut out the the defined shape of the nose because this is a Chicana clown, so she has uh, a painted nose. And so I was able to cut out the full shape without having to worry about creating sharp lines because uh, obviously there are sharp lines in the makeup. Uh, then I, uh, you know, obviously I cut around uh, the background, I spray that in. I uh, always try to move from the background forward, uh, spraying in the farthest most element that, uh, elements that I can see, and then moving to the next element forward. Um, but usually, uh, sometimes I will do it a little bit backwards, like here uh, with the face. I try to, especially when doing faces, I try to concentrate on the face first, because if you do not get the face down, Basically, you've just wasted however many hours that you spent on the whole rest of the airbrushing if the face is jacked up. So I tend to try to focus on the face as much as possible right away and then work on some of the other elements uh, as I go. But uh, trying to establish the major landmarks, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, uh, and then um, again, just uh, because we are... You know, because I am working black and white uh, with this image, I went ahead and just cut out the areas that I could see that were just going to be sprayed in pure black in the dress and cut those out right away, uh, leaving the shapes of the flowers that uh, would remain. Uh, there are a couple of leaves that I ended up, um, or a stem and... Uh, that that I did not paint in, I ended up covering it uh, just because I ended up cu cutting off the flower when I cut off the background. So uh, 
again, this is just artistic license. You don't have to do it exactly like the photograph. Uh, there are she, there's some tattoos on her chest that I left out intentionally. Just didn't feel like she really needed them. She's such a beautiful woman. And uh, the face makeup, uh, it was enough to really make uh, make this even more interesting than, than just a regular portrait. Uh, again, here you see that uh, spray towards the background, cutting away, leaving the loop of the earring, and then cutting away the ear section and uh, shaping that in. Uh, here I'm moving on to the hair. So again, cutting away, leaving the uh, shape of the flower itself and then uh, cutting away the hair section. Uh, again, with hair, you just have to kind of draw it in, in groups, in clumps. Uh, the hair tends to move in a certain direction. Uh, so you try to f uh, follow the flow of the hair. Uh, again, remember light, dark, shadows, uh, leaving some of the white exposed will leave you highlights. Um, Obviously, the darker you concentrate your paint is going to give you uh, darker shadows. And uh, once I established the shape of the hair and I wasn't worried about um, overspray, I removed the uh, cutout for her face and the flowers just so I could soften up the edge where the hair and the face meet. Uh, here, I did cut out the shapes for the... Um, chevrons that come off the bottom of her eye uh, both of her eyes um, I tried freehanding this the last time I painted this image uh, I have painted her once before and um, that one came out really really well uh, I, I personally think a little better it looked a little more like the subject than this one but uh, still it was a beautiful rendering I, I was still very happy with it but uh, yeah it was just slightly off uh, of the original compared to to the first time that I painted this this subject so um, but again uh, I was trying a few different techniques than the last time um, last time I cut away the little section for the makeup that you see that I'm working on now um, I actually cut it away all the way around her mouth and you and used that as a shield the last time this time I tried to freehand it in just to give it a little bit more of a natural painted on look uh, rather than something that was of course stenciled so um, yeah uh, it still came out fine I was able to keep the proportions I was able to still make it work it's just that um, it does require us uh, you know obviously more concentration and control of the airbrush itself so uh, when you do decide to do things freehand uh, you just have to remember your overspray uh, you know how close you get to the surface for sharper cleaner lines farther away for softer lines and sh broader shadows um, and uh, yeah, just uh, support your hand. Um, obviously, you'll get straighter lines when you have it supported with two points of contact versus one. But uh, don't discount practicing drawing with one hand because there are often times that you know you will find yourself in a situation where it is just easier to draw or more comfortable to paint with one hand versus two. Uh, so definitely practice both techniques. Uh, here again, uh, I do implement the use of erasers in my work, especially on hard substrates. Uh, this is a wood skateboard. Uh, it was pre-painted. I uh, scuffed the entire surface with 800 grit sandpaper uh, just to give it some tooth for the paint to grip onto. But uh, I am going to be sealing this with an automotive grade uh, top coat. Uh, very soon so once I do that then uh, that'll definitely lock in this artwork and uh, bring out even more of the detail uh, now I did go ahead uh, I will mention that I did go ahead and uh, spray this with a candy uh, a blue candy off camera uh, afterwards so um, this was a decision I made um, a little bit later 
still came out it still looks nice i just uh one thing that i will mention is uh even though the candies are transparent you will lose some of the definition it'll mute some of the definition that you that uh especially when compared to bright white so uh just be prepared for that uh, i did go in and pull out just the high the the brightest spectral highlights on both of the woman's lips, uh, the tip of the nose on the girl with the painted face, and the specular highlights in her eyes. I was debating whether or not to pull them out in the whites of the eyes, but I just went ahead and left them. Uh, still looks pretty cool, but again, this was a, a artistic decision, just uh, playing around, seeing what it looks like, and uh, I, uh, again, I do like it. Uh, blue is my favorite color, but it uh it did kill some of the some of the details so uh again just keep that in mind especially if uh uh you know there are certain elements that have a subtle uh tone to them uh they may completely disappear uh within this you know uh, once you put the candy on it uh but Still, overall, I was very, very pleased with the outcome of this painting. Uh, here, again, I just free-handed in the flowers uh, that uh, come up off of her shoulder. Um, the, the flowers, I decided to not extend the stems past her shoulder, just using the top of, the, uh, the, of her sleeve uh, as the top border because it was just about the right width as the brim of the hat on the girl in the second image, which is what we're starting now. Again, we cut out the background uh, to spray in and try to connect these two images and uh, blend it down from her dress uh, into the hat and uh, using her arm and the top of the hat kind of as a melting point. So. Uh, again, uh, very, sprayed very light towards the, uh, uh, here you'll see I just cut the top of the hat away above the, above the hat, um, band and, um, spraying very lightly from the bottom up towards the arm, trying not to spray into the arm itself, but just creating a soft border as opposed to a, a very hard border. Uh, then I replaced that piece. I um, used a small piece of scotch tape to hold it in place while I held up the bottom piece uh, to create, again, a, a shield for overspray while I shaped in this hat band, uh, creating the, check the checkered texture and then uh, shading it in from the sides, leaving it uh, less coverage towards the center, emulating uh, that's where the light source is shining uh, and highlighting the hat brim. Um, again, uh, now that I moved into the brim of the hat, we start off light and then darken as needed, uh, going darker and darker until I've achieved uh, pretty much the tone that I was going for. Uh, again, uh, working your way, you know, from light to dark and Go in, pull out your highlights, you use an eraser if you have to. Uh, this is what I'm doing here. And uh, pull out those hot, just those tiny highlights because the background is white. And, uh, you know, establish your shapes. Uh, again, here I went into the, into the flowers themselves and decided to pull out some, some kind of brighter white highlights just to give it a little bit more dimension uh, and a little bit more of an artistic feel uh, to how the flowers were done. Uh, here again, uh, cutting out the chevrons in the bottom of the eyes just to get a sharper uh, you know, result than trying to do it freehand. And uh, again, cutting out just the the nostrils, the edges of her nose, just to establish where the, the corners of her nose are and uh, using that as a reference and then freehanding in uh, the rest. And again, this is just going very, very light until I reach the level of opacity that I want. Uh, keeping in mind shape 
uh, the shape of her cheeks, the shadow that would be cast from on the top of the brim. And uh, here, again, using the same technique, cutting away the top lip, uh, painting it in, uh, trying to match the look and aesthetic feel of the, of the painting itself, and then cutting away the bottom lip, trying to maintain the highlights, the teeth that are visible between her lips, and then going in with the eraser and pulling out again the spectral highlights that make her whip her lips look wet. Uh, cutting out the shape of the face to expose the areas where her where we're going to be filling in her hair. And her hair is straight, so we're going to be using fast uh, downward strokes starting from the hair uh, or from the hat and moving downwards and. Uh, until we fill fill in um, all of the hair area. Now, normally uh, I would put the brim, which is where you see here. I grabbed the cutaway from the from the brim of the hat and placed it back, so that way I wouldn't have overspray um, interfering with anything uh, that I've already painted. And then just using a fast downward motion, streaking it and creating that depth and dimension and fill of strands uh, through the hair. And not as many as you think. Uh, it goes very, very quickly. Then again, just pulling away the paper mask, softening some of those edges where the hair and the face meet and uh, rounding off the face. And then uh, moving into, again, the, the sides uh, down near her hand, uh, where we are actually going to be moving into a sugar skull figure. Now again, I do use various uh, shields, freehand shields, masks, and uh, good old airbrush control uh, to create my images and really you just have to practice all disciplines practice holding the uh, holding the shield with one hand spraying with just one hand um, you know holding it with two hands free-handed uh, you know freehand airbrushing uh, you really want to just try to maintain all of these different disciplines that's why again I reemphasize you know trying to practice at least one to two hours every day um, whether it's just lines dots dashes whatever you need to do to keep your skills uh, sharp that is what you know you need to do and trust me uh, even an hour a day is going to do wonders for your progress uh, i never really uh, practiced before um, i never took the time to really practice and hone my skills and uh, try different skills and techniques and since I've done that uh, my artwork has just uh, progressed in leaps and bounds so uh, again don't uh, don't discount uh, you know practice uh, practice makes perfect you know the, there's a reason that there's that saying uh, is you know the, the more you practice the better you're gonna get uh, so here again we moved into the uh, lower face cut away the back neck area uh, heading back towards her hand uh, there is a you know some of the sugar skull um, designs that are blending from the background into the foreground and vice versa so again when you do a digital composite in the computer often the the way that you're able to achieve these uh, images is by layering them and then uh, uh, erasing back with a uh, soft eraser uh, until you kind of reach the opacity that you're looking for that uh, transparency to be able to see the other image from underneath and uh, if you can do that uh, softly and seamlessly, uh, th that's when uh, an image really does look uh, 
you know, a lot more impactful. And uh, so these these type of images that that I can you know that you can tell, um, you know, were were computer composite. Uh, those ones I uh, I will sometimes I will uh, I will sign my work just because again a computer and a photograph that's a, it's a different art medium than creating it with your hands and paint because uh, uh, you know anybody with a camera uh, you know you have enough money and a nice enough camera you can take really nice pictures too uh, it doesn't take the greatest amount of skill in the world to take pictures um, you know if you have a finger you can take a picture uh, not everybody can paint uh, convincingly and to make it look realistic and appealing to the appealing to the eye. So, again, um, you know, yes, photography is artwork. Yes, it takes an artistic mind to have the vision to see the images and capture them and put them together. But um, again, doesn't take the greatest amount of skill to do that now painting uh, again especially with an airbrush uh, and if you do freehand uh, it is definitely uh, a skill and ability that you need to hone and uh, you know try to improve if if you hope to you know, make money one day with your artwork and, and, you know, have people say, you know, be impressed with your work or whatever your goal is, whatever is you're looking to accomplish with art. You know, if you're just wanting to express yourself, if you're just wanting to create some beauty, hey, go for it. You know, if you're trying to make a living, you're wanting to one day, you know, pay your bills with your artwork, then, you know, take it seriously. Invest in your, in your, tools and your materials uh, you know take the time to take some classes um, whatever it is that you have to do you know to achieve your goals you do it because ultimately you're the only one standing in your way you're the only one stopping you from living the life that you want to live uh, again I can say that from experience I'm here at 41 years old back in college you know after 23 years of graduating high school and uh, I love it I'm learning things every day I'm, uh, garnering new relationships I'm using my uh, knowledge and experience to help uh, some of the younger students and uh, you know I'm I'm doing something about my life rather than just sit around and uh, complain about how, you know, I'm not working or how I hate being broke or work living off a disability. I am actually doing something about it. So uh, I just am grateful that I have this opportunity that, uh, you know, I've been graced, you know, and blessed, you know, uh, to be able to do this. Uh, to come back to school and to have these opportunities. So, like I said, I'm not trying to waste this opportunity at all. I'm trying to take as uh, full advantage of it as I can, uh, take as many classes as I can, and, uh, you know, hopefully walk across this stage with a degree. Uh, so here, uh, again, we just, uh, once we moved into the hand in the flower uh, that was all free-handed in, uh, this airbrush that I'm using is a G22.3 millimeter. So this is about a $30 airbrush. And uh, like I said, uh, any airbrush, cheap, expensive, whatever, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. I mean, you can detail with them. You just have to figure out a way to do it. You have to figure out how to to mix your paint so that it flows right, that you're getting the detail and control uh, that you want, and, you know, just don't be afraid. Uh, again, like I said, you don't need the most expensive airbrushes to start 
airbrushing. Um, you know, I've been airbrushing for uh, about 14 months now, you know, over a year. And, uh, you know, I've used master airbrushes this entire time. Now, in that time, I have purchased some more expensive airbrushes. And again, they work fine. I'm not saying they don't work. I'm saying you don't need them. Uh, you know, this, this whole airbrushing right here, this whole skateboard is, again, just the, the reason that I use these airbrushes so much is, one, because they're so cheap and I'm not afraid to break them. Because uh, I, I broke the nozzle on my uh, Takumi uh, Micron and it cost me $50 just for the nozzle. And, uh, yeah, that was like insane so uh again you know these other airbrushes they 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 work they simply work i'm able i'm really not able to obtain to get too much better results from my 500 hundred dollar airbrush than i am from my 30 dollar airbrush honestly um you know whether that's my inability to fully utilize this tool or if that's just, you know, I don't know. Like I said, but if, you know, you you want to spend the money on it, if you have that kind of money to, to spend on a, on a Micron, buy the Micron. It is a good airbrush. It is a quality airbrush. It does produce the finest lines. But for $500, there are other airbrushes that produce nearly identical fine lines for a lot less money so that's just how i feel about it but again uh you know if you use this airbrush use some of the tricks you know uh, use uh, the freehand shields and uh, erasers and and whatnot you can you can emulate pretty much any effect that the expensive airbrushes uh you know may be able to do a little bit easier or with less effort but uh you know if you're afraid to work hard you may want to think about picking up a different hobby because sometimes uh the airbrush uh that i found has you know can be super difficult uh super challenging it'll frustrate the hell out of you uh but when it comes together when it's working right man there's just nothing else that compares in my mind and again, I've said I've worked with uh, charcoals, acrylics, watercolors, oil paintings, alcohol markers, colored pencils, you name it. I've tried pretty much everything. And my favorite thing to, uh, my favorite medium or tool to use to create is the airbrush. Uh, I've just falling in love with it the the images i'm able to create how fast i'm able to create them the different um, uh, substrates that i'm able to paint uh surfaces you know uh paper uh plastic metal wood uh it just it's never ending um you know t-shirts <laughs> jackets you name it and uh, I'm having a blast. And like I said, I really, really enjoy uh, creating. And I do enjoy sharing my process with you guys. I do apologize that my teaching style maybe is not uh, what you're used to. Or maybe is not as, um, I guess, um, instruction friendly. Telling you do this, then do that, then do this. Uh, this is really more just observations uh, of the process of, you know, the decisions I made, why I made them, and, uh, you know, uh, just what was going through my head or what I was concentrating on when creating uh, this image. And, uh, yeah, again, uh, you know, this, this could have come out probably even cleaner uh, had I actually marked out you know these uh these markings like the face of the skull you know uh either uh trace them out or use the paper mask themselves to cut away certain sections 
but uh, a skull is such a simple design that I felt confident that I've done enough skulls in my life, either through tattoos or, uh, you know, now through airbrushing, that uh, I could render out a skull relatively easy without having to use a, uh, a stencil. Uh, we did just have some uh, loss in footage there. The, uh, the computer or the phone stopped broadcasting for a few minutes. Uh, I had to figure out what was going on with it, and uh, I got it up and running again. And uh, I don't believe we lost any footage. I don't think I continued to paint uh, while we were away. But uh, here, again, we're just continuing to shape the face, the teeth, the lower jaw, uh, using the highlight, the electric eraser to pull out the highlights, and uh, the aggressive pencil erasers. These are ink typewriter erasers, uh, Mars Stadler, uh, Rubicor, Dixie Rubicor erasers, and the Afmat electric eraser uh, with the Sun Dolphin Seed uh, eraser refills. And these are a sand and rubber eraser refill that is designed uh, to be more aggressive and pull out ink. Um, so, again, this isn't just the regular refill that came with the electric eraser. Uh, here we are near the bottom of the painting. We're just finishing it up, uh, shaping out the, the bottom of the jaw, adding the decorations, and uh, trying to fill out the last little details and uh, reach that uh, level of darkness that I was looking for. Uh, at this point, most of my mixture was pretty, uh, pretty watery. Uh, so I did have to go in and add some uh, Wicked Jet Black some more. Uh, just to darken it up and give us better coverage because it was just coming out a little uh, too watery for the coverage that I needed to finish off this last part of the board. Uh, so here we're just going to, once this is mixed and I start to fill it in, you'll see how much faster and darker it starts to fill in. And uh, that is because, again, uh, this is less reduced, more of the pure pigment uh, coming through the airbrush. And uh, we're just uh, pulling out the same shapes that I can see in the reference, just some little highlights uh, uh, from a dress or something, and uh, some more flowers in the uh, lower right-hand corner, and just freehanding those again. Flowers are somewhat simple but uh, they can be difficult uh, you just have to you know again remember shadows highlights depth and uh, yeah pretty much uh, we're done with this piece I want to thank you guys for your time thank you for joining again uh, celebrate 100 uh, subscribers uh, please like and uh, share this